the fifth word for today i thirst taken from john chapter 19 verse 28 to 29 already pastor has done the reading so i won't waste time on that reading so i have taken three points the first point is jesus suffered physically from the cross jesus says i thirst why did jesus say i thirst on the cross we have never thought of it actually whether it has got one meaning or there are many other meanings behind it we will say jesus say i thirst which means he is thirsty he is asking for water but all for the 9 hours he did not ask for my water and why right at the end on the fifth word that is saying i thirst he who is the creator of the world who made the seas the rivers the lakes the ponds the rain from the sky who created the oceans and he walked on those waters and commands those waters he who is the living waters himself says i thirst hanging from the cross bruised and bleeding and dying jesus is parched anguished cry i thirst jesus is cry is excruciatingly painful yet a beautiful invitation at the same time jesus could not have uttered this word if he was not fully human jesus begs for water imagine god is asking for help the maker of all things the master of the universe the almighty who has no need for anything ask for a human kindness he asked for water to quench his thirst he was completely human like us he did not have to be human we gave him the power to die he made wonderful exchange with us he will give us the power to live he gave the power to die power us to die but he gave us the power to live i did this for you i became man for you jesus thirst not only for water he has other thirst other hungers he is the one who gives water and we are the thirsty ones remember this line he is who gives the water and we are the thirsty ones i have a great thirst for justice and peace i have a thirst for love to replace hatred i thirst for righteousness and holiness Jesus is thirst must become our thirst we must thirst for peace and justice for good government and honest leaders Jesus says i am with you in the dark in the in your weakness i am with you in your loneliness i am with you in your utter grief i am with you in your suffering he was always thirsty for us he is not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance are we giving him our time are we giving him our prayers are we giving him our talents are we giving him the gifts that he has given to us we give him are we giving him our worship and are we giving him our praise or are we better off than those who crucified them 2000 years ago what do you thirst for what are your thirst for now ask yourself is this is it that one thing that you want so badly that thing that you are longing for that thing your thirst for is not been achieved because you have tried for too long to quench that thirst on your own because many a times we want some things and we are waiting for it but we don't depend on god we are trying to do it on our own strength we live in the world of i it is all about i can anybody guess about it what is that i okay it's all about iphone ipad ipod i music it is all about i but that i is a small letter i and that pad or pod or music whatever it is the first letter comes in capital okay so here god has an app that is i thirst a small letter i and the thirst the t is the capital of it i thirst but deep inside the heart of every single man and woman ever born is a deep thirst and only god has an app for that that's i thirst jesus understands your pain jesus understands your suffering jesus understands your sorrow christ thirsted for us 2000 years ago on the cross he thirsts for us today 
The question is, will we thirst for him? Most of us live in fear thinking about the future. Some of them are afraid of getting old. Some of them are afraid of their retirement. Some of them are afraid of how they're going to pay the bills. Some of them have um, a lot of things like which has not been achieved. They are afraid of what is going to happen in future. So this fear which is always there, Jesus knows. And Jesus cares and Jesus understands. Maybe you are suffering in your body today. Maybe you have lost a loved one. Maybe a friend or a family member have died. You know the pain of lowering someone into the grave of someone you loved, a parent, grandparent, a wife, a husband, a child. Jesus Christ came into the world from heaven, took on full humanity. He was sinless and experienced of all our sorrows, all of our sufferings, all of our pain, physical, social, emotional, and even spiritual. He was separated from God on the cross. Everything you could go through, he suffered. He experienced, he understands, and Jesus came to deal with our sin, to redeem us from sin, to save us from sin. God is in control. God has a purpose. God has a plan. And God has a pain. It's not without purpose. God knows what he's doing. Trust him. We all of us go through some kind of pain, some kind of suffering. And during the suffering, we feel whether God really knows the pain that we are going through, the suffering that we are going through. Yes, of course, God knows what you are going through. Because he came in the form of a man. He could have easily uh, stayed with his divine power, not going through the pain. But because he wants to understand our pain, he came into the form of humanity, and he went to that cross. Hanging on that cross, he realized what the pain is. When you're suffering and when you're in pain, turn your mind toward the scriptures, meditate on them, quote them, claim their promises, let God speak to you in your pain. The phrase, I thirst, reminds us again of the incredible physical suffering that Jesus suffered on our behalf. Jesus was not pretending to be thirsty. He was desperately thirsty, he was actually thirsty. He suffered as a real man, this was part of him being truly human and experiencing the pain and suffering of a fallen world. And on the cross, he bears his suffering, acutely experiencing the full effect of what we have caused to us by our sin as he bears them on the cross. Let's look at the second point. Jesus fulfilled the scripture. In John 19 verse 28, it says, 28 and 29, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. To fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked the sponge in it and put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. Now, after having been hung on the cross for several hours, Jesus was experiencing the worst physical pain. From the lashes to the crown of thorns, to the iron spikes, that were driven through his hands to the torture of hanging on that cross for several hours. Having to gasp for air in the midst of this pain, Jesus expresses a simple physical reality, I'm thirsty now. When your loved one is in the, on a deathbed, that person becomes thirsty. Especially when you're in a hospital, when a patient is there and the nurse comes to know that that patient is in a deathbed and it is the last minute, like any moment that patient will go. So that nurse or any of the workers who are there, any of the staff who's there will try to release some water in his mouth or in her mouth, okay? I remember my grandma, when I was too old, young to understand what was happening. I was maybe around 10 years old or something. So my aunt, they, she sent a message saying that uh, any moment she may go. So please come and visit, give a last visit. So I still remember as a young child when uh, my grandmom was lying on a dead bed, um, a small ball of water was kept with a small spoon that only one drop of water will go in the mouth. So that time I did not understand, like the person on the dead bed will actually feel thirsty. Some may be able to speak in their last, but then some are not able to speak. And that is how like we remember that the person on the dead bed is actually thirsty and we have to give her water.
Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 18, verse 31, that everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. And as he hangs in agony on the cross, he declares his thirst in the fulfillment of scripture, reminding us that he is the suffering servant, he is the Lamb of God, he is the one who takes away the sins of the world, and that God's plan of a salvation is fulfilled as it was written. Therefore, let us look to Christ on the cross as the one who fulfilled the scriptures, and let us recognize that even though Satan, the Jews, and the Romans meant his death for evil, God meant it for the greatest good of the world. Everything was going according to the plan, but we still ask the question, why thirst? Why did Jesus need to suffer in this way? Why was a thirst a part of the scripture that needed fulfillment in the first place? We'll find the answer in a final revelation where we see that Jesus provided for our thirst. This is the third point. To understand this point, we have to go back to the beginning where God created Adam and Eve. He created them in a perfect garden that had everything they needed. They need not to worry about food. And they had the enjoyment of his presence, including a great river. They had it all. God's presence, pleasant food, beautiful scenery, and plentiful water. No death, no hunger, no thirst. Until they disobeyed God by eating of one of the tree, of one of the one tree he commanded them not to eat from. Adam and Eve were sent out to the garden where they would experience all the effects of their sin, including hunger, death, pain, sorrow, sickness, and thirst. All of these points, all of these things pointed to their broken relationship with him, what they had lost. But God, in his mercy, called a man named Abraham and promised to make him into a great nation. This nation was the nation of Israel, with whom God made a covenant, a promise to be their God and they be his people. They were given commands that required them to be faithful to God and worship him alone. This would lead to covenant blessings if kept, but if disobeyed, they would lead to covenant curses, and one of these curses was thirst. It was a sign of a broken relationship with God, of our sin. It was a physical representation of a spiritual dehydration and a need for salvation, a need for someone to bear our thirst curse and give us living water. That's who Isaiah prophesied about. That is who Jesus is. We see this in John chapter 4, 13, 14, where Jesus tells a woman at a well, whoever drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And it says in John 6, 35, whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the third thing that Jesus' statement, I thirst, reveals to us. He's providing what the curse of physical thirst points to a spiritual thirst, a broken relationship with God, and he does so by becoming thirsty himself in our place, even though he perfectly obeyed of God's commands so that he could give us spring of water welling up to eternal life. In his physical thirst, he is bearing a curse of spiritual thirst by receiving the wrath of God against our sins. The physical pain and the torture that Jesus went through, he went through for all of us. The scriptures were fulfilled. Christ's work was done. The battle was over. The victory was won. But what else was Jesus thirsting for? Perhaps he thirsts for an end to his suffering. He knows that all is finished and he yearns. He thirsts for relief. He wants the pain to end. The sour wine is but a temporary fix, really to help at all. But in his thirst for relief, he reminds us of the need of the countless hunkers and thirst that surround us. When was the last time you really were thirsty? Can you remember a time when you were dying for a sip of water? Do you know what it means to be really thirsty? We always try to carry a water bottle. I don't think in our younger days we never carry a water bottle with us, but nowadays it's compulsory to carry a water bottle because we don't know, we don't believe the water which we are getting outside is clear or not. And we, in our younger age, in school days and all, we used to drink from the tap water. But nowadays, you don't believe anything. Even if you are getting a, a water bottle outside, 
You don't know whether it's a pure bislary water or it is something else. If you feel unsatisfied with your life, that's called spiritual thirst. And the only one who can quench that thirst is the one who said, I thirst. Jesus thirsted on the cross, so you don't have to thirst. He paid for what you don't have to pay for. He became thirst, so you never have to be thirsty again. The last point I would like to say, I thirst is God's app for your thirst. Jesus thirsted that we might think deeply and be satisfied perpetually. What an offer. Are you thirsty today? I know you are. Every human being has come to the living water and we bring and have a drink. What an offer he was making to those of us who all thirst and that the thirst could be quenched. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, though we are rightfully deserved to be thirsty for eternity. You gave us Christ who thirsted on our behalf, on the cross, who bore the judgment, the penalty for our sins, who raised from the dead, and now when we come to him, when we come to the waters, we have life in his name. We pray that you would help us to celebrate and delight in these truths and continually come to him in repentance and faith and in obedience until that day where we will be continually led by springs of living water. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.